Hello everybody, Michael here with Do It Justice and welcome to the next video in our DIY solar power series. Today is an exciting day because we're covering the last major component of the solar power system. In the previous three videos we've talked about the solar panels, the battery bank, the charge controller, and now we're going to cover what happens after the battery bank and that is the solar inverter. Now what this inverter is designed to do is it's designed to transfer the DC power that's stored inside of the batteries into your standard AC power. Now if you don't know what DC and AC power is, today is the perfect day for me to go ahead and give you the fundamental differences between those two different types of power so that you can use that when installing your system from this point forward. So let's go ahead and start by talking about DC power. DC stands for direct current and what this means is the electricity flowing through the line is going in one direction only from point A to point B. Now when it comes to DC power it's usually found in lower voltage applications such as 12 volt, 24 volt or 48 volt. Uh, it can be found in different configurations as well but it's mainly used to power low volt appliances such as DC fans, DC lights, uh, DC pumps and other things like this. You can also buy DC powered appliances that have that little cigarette outlet on the end so you can plug them into your car or you can also plug them into your RV that has a dedicated DC system. Now AC power is a little bit different. AC stands for alternating current and what that means is the electricity in the line is moving in two different directions so it's alternating back and forth. Now you'll normally find AC power in really higher voltage applications such as 120 volts or 220 volts like you'll find in your standard household. In fact, almost every household is powered by AC power if you're plugged into the grid. Now if you want those AC appliances to run off of your solar system, you need an inverter to transform that DC power that's stored in the batteries into AC power to power your AC appliances. So that's really what the solar inverter is designed for. So because most people who install a solar system are going to run AC appliances through that system, a solar inverter is absolutely necessary. So speaking on that topic, let's go ahead and jump into the two types of solar inverters that you can buy. The first type of inverter you can buy is called a modified sine wave inverter. Now this is the more inexpensive type of inverter. It's also the more basic and older version of the technology. And what it does is it's not really designed to power sensitive electronics like computers, phones, and maybe TVs, stuff like that. Now when you go online and you look and see how people's um, experiences were while, when plugging these types of things into these modified sine wave inverters, uh, you'll get varying degrees of results. So um, if you guys have had experience with these modified sine wave inverters, please hit me up in the comments below. I'm curious to know what does and does not run on it. But in general, what you just need to remember is that it's not designed to charge these sensitive electronics. So if you're looking for something to charge all of your stuff, like your household appliances and stuff like that, you're going to want to maybe look towards the other option that I'm going to tell you about, and that is the pure sine wave inverter. Now granted, these pure sine wave inverters are much more expensive than the modified sine wave inverters, but they deliver a more realistic and more um, home experience when it comes to delivering AC power to your appliances. So what these inverters do is they take that DC power and they transform it into 120 volt AC power. Now I'm going to pop up a graph here that's going to talk about and show you and demonstrate to you the difference between a pure sine wave inverter and a modified sine wave inverter. So that smooth line that you see there going from a high of 120 volts to a low of negative 120 volts is going to be your pure sine wave. Now this is the smoothest way of delivering AC current to your AC appliances. Now, when you look at the modified sine wave graph, this is a more jagged, kind of almost stair-stepping way of delivering the energy. So it's not quite as smooth, which is basically the reason that it's not meant to power sensitive electronics that can be damaged by those variations. So now that you know the fundamental differences between AC and DC power, as well as the differences between the two types of inverters you can buy, I'm going to talk about how to properly size an inverter to run the appliances that you want to run on your solar power system. 
So if you recall in the second video of the solar power series, I talked about how to properly size your solar power system. And what I had you do when doing that was going around and finding all the appliances or thinking about all the appliances that you wanted to run off the solar system. Now, when you found the appliance, you needed to calculate the output wattage of that appliance. So let's take the hair dryer for example. So the size of the inverter is directly correlated with the output wattage of your highest powered appliance. And then you have to also take into consideration how many appliances you wanna run at the the same time. So if you have an 1800 watt hair dryer and you have a 1000 watt blender that you guys want to run at the same time, that's going to add up to 2800 watts. Now you're going to need an inverter that's probably around 3000 watts. Keep in mind that you can change your electrical usage habits so that you can reduce the need for a higher powered inverter because these inverters get really expensive the higher power you go as well as the higher quality you go. So what you need to take into account is the fact that if you want a lower powered inverter but you still want to run that 1800 watt hair dryer, you can't really have anything else running at the same time because with an 1800 watt hair dryer, you're probably going to want about a 2000 watt inverter. Also, be sure to note that you want a little bit more inverter than what you actually need. So if you're gonna be running on average around 1500 watts of power continuously at the same time, it's probably good instead of getting a 1500 watt inverter, you might as well jump up to 2000 watts. It's not that much more expensive and it gives you an extra cushion in between what you use and what the inverter is capable of. Okay guys, over the last six videos, you've seen me cover six different topics and ideas about solar fundamentals, just overarching 30,000 foot view ideas of what you need to know before you get into solar power. Now, I can't wait to go into more detail on a lot of these concepts. I need to know what you guys wanna hear and what you guys wanna see, so hit me up in the comments section below. Let me know what you wanna see specifics on and I'll get those videos ready to go. This is the last video you'll see in this format as far as solar fundamentals go. So next week we're gonna be jumping into our RV and showing you how we installed our personal system. So I can't wait to walk you guys through that. If you guys wanna see more stuff like that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. You'll get notified when we produce those videos. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button down below. It lets Jenny and I know, as well as YouTube know, that we're producing high quality content that you guys wanna see. Also, if you have any comments on this particular video, we'd love to hear you down in the comment section below. And as always guys, I will see you on the next video.